Welcome to the 161st membership meeting convened by Winston Tab. Parts of our uh, annual meeting, which is to acknowledge and welcome and get acquainted with our new member representatives. We have five of them here today, so at this point, as I begin to introduce you, will each of the introducers and the person you're introducing proceed toward a microphone so that we can begin as soon as everyone is in place? Of the five new members whom we'll be uh, meeting today, some of us for the first time, are Lou McGowdy from Laval, who will be introduced by Colleen Cook, Rebecca Graham from Guelph, introduced by Jim Neal, Ann Cooper Moore from Southern Illinois, introduced by Brindley Franklin, Mackenzie Smith from UC Davis, introduced by Ann Wolpert, and Shui Mao Wang from Cincinnati, introduced by Rick Luce. So we'll begin in that order. Again, I'm just hoping that people are where they need to be. And we'll begin with uh, Colleen. Are you there? Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jim. I am here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am here to announce uh, that the migration of US librarians to Canadian research library directorships is continuing. Uh, this time, <laughs> in the form of Rebecca Graham, who is the new Chief Information Officer and Chief Librarian at the University of Guelph. Uh, she comes to this new assignment via the Harvard College Library and the uh, Countway Library of Medicine, Johns Hopkins, where I had the privilege of working with her, the Digital Library Federation, and the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. She is also a testimonial uh, to the ARL RLLF program, and that she is an illustration that it is working well. Uh, she participated in the first, first class of fellows. Public libraries, and I should also note a stint in the military, are part of her past experience. Rebecca and her partner Eva have settled in with their 10 year old twin boys. She tells me that her first encounter uh, with Canada was the reminiscing by her father of the wonderful car trips he took in the 1930s uh, from Kansas City to Lake Louise and about the extraordinary landscapes and vistas uh, that, that he enjoyed. I think this is why Rebecca is such a vista person. Concerned about starting at a new university and a new city and in a new country, Rebecca found herself recently serving hot dogs at a Campus United Way picnic. And she she had her Sally Field moment. They really like me. <laughs> Welcome, Rebecca, to ARL. We really like you. <laughs> Brindley? Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to uh, introduce Ann Cooper Moore as the new Dean of Library Affairs at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. So I first got to know Ann when she was the Associate Director for User Services and Head of Reference Services at UMass Amherst. And UMass was among the first libraries, at least that I knew of, to really implement a learning commons or an information commons. And Ann graciously hosted one tour after another of librarians coming to Amherst to see what this uh, learning commons was all about. And one of those people was me. <laughs> um, a few years later, our research and information services staff at UConn selected Ann to perform a program review of that operation. And this is at a time when we were closing our reference desk and we were telling librarians, subject librarians, that they needed to get out of the building and um, go work with their academic departments. Uh, Ann was really well received. She. Uh, there were a few close calls, but as I recall, she escaped unscathed from that project, at least for the most part. I also remember an early uh, interesting experiment with Anne that was a variation on blended distance learning and not so massive or open online education. Anne was out in uh, South Dakota teaching her class at Simmons Online, and I was with her students in Massachusetts to guest lecture for part of the session and I think we were using some not ready for prime time uh, technology. So it really didn't surprise me when Ann headed off to S South Dakota in 2008 to become the dean at uh, USD because I always knew that she was a pioneer. 
She earned her, bachelor, her bachelor's degree in Spanish and English at Duke, a master's in library and information science from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and a doctorate in educational management and development at New Mexico State University. She also did master's coursework at BU in education. In addition to serving as dean of libraries at the University of South Dakota and associate dean for, universe, for user services and head of reference services at UMass, some of her previous academic library experiences were at New Mexico State, George Mason, and the University of Arizona. She's taught co courses in Simmons uh, Graduate School of Library and Information Science in both evaluation and um, academic libraries since 2004. And for those of you who are involved with the RLF program, she enjoys mentoring developing librarians. So uh, you'll want to take advantage of that. Anne's fluent or has knowledge of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, French, and German. Why, you may ask? Well, she spent more than 25 years moving around the United States and abroad to various Air Force bases with her fighter pilot husband. She has three grown children now as well as a young grandson. And now I would like to say that Anne enjoys running, biking, and hiking. In fact, she works out a lot. I mean, a lot. So a colleague uh, recommended to me when they um, heard that I was going to be introducing Anne, that I should pass along this information to you. If you see Anne in the gym in the morning, say hello, expect a, an upbeat and cheerful response, and then go find a machine on the other side of the room if you, don't, <laughs> if you want to maintain your self-esteem. So please join me in welcoming Anne to the Association of Research Library. Ann Wolpert. Well, it's my great pleasure to introduce Mackenzie Smith, who for nine years made me look smart. Um, Mackenzie isn't new to ARL libraries. She has lent her formidable talents to uh, uh, MIT, Harvard University, University of Chicago, before she went to UC Davis. And she has also lent her talents to ARL. She uh, led, if you remember, the new eScience Institute, which shaped so many of our libraries in thinking about uh, entering into the data and science arena. Um, Mackenzie uh, is a well-rounded person. Um, she uh, is someone speaking of physical fitness, who used to bike to work, and still does, from, from Berkeley to UC Davis. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. I would say, whatever, wherever the machine is, you want to be a really long way away from McKenzie. <laughs> um. She's uh, also a superb judge of wines, um, having collected them and drunk them for many years. <laughs> and she is, uh, you may not know, a world-class rower. She rows routinely in the head of the Charles race. Um, in Bo Are you rowing this year? Not this year, too busy. But there's nothing quite like going to a meeting with Mackenzie and seeing blistered palms. You know she's been working hard on that. Um, Mackenzie, in my mind, represents the, uh, really embodies the 21st century librarian. She is deeply competent in technology and is able to explain that technology to mere mortals. She's a brilliant strategist in terms of where libraries have been and need to go. And she's a tremendous motivator because she leads by example. Um, and, of course, she doesn't suffer fools gladly either. <laughs> but then, who among us does? So it is a great pleasure for me to be able to work with Mackenzie in a different capacity at this point. I know you'll enjoy her. You may not want to invite her to go rowing or biking, but do invite her to dinner because she really can pick out a good bottle of wine. So <laughs> welcome, Mackenzie. Rick? Well, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, it's a real pleasure to, to be able to introduce <clears throat> my friend, my colleague, and a rising ARL leader, Shimao Wang. This is a, a very, very compelling story, America's story, a story of an immigrant. 
Shimo was set to go to college in China when Mao Zedong decided it was time for a cultural revolution. His talent was to learn how to grow sweet, uh, sweet potatoes, and his very well-being depended on his ability to be able to do that successfully. As you can see, he was quite successful at that. <laughs> He's here with us today. Uh, after going through that duress and, and experience, he attended Wuhan University. I'm sorry, he, he graduated uh, from Wuhan University, and he became the head of information systems uh, information Services at Sichuan Uni Institute of Business in Chongqing, China. Twenty-two years and twenty-two and a half years ago, he came to the USA in 1991 with two suitcases and 50 bucks in his pocket. He did have a brother here, and was was inspired to come to this country and really try to fulfill some of his ambitions and his dreams. He decided to attend Kutztown University of Pennsylvania in library science. He arrived there not only with two suitcases and $50 in his pocket, but he left behind his wife and young son until they could join him, not, uh, not until 18 months later. He had no scholarship assistance. Taking four courses, he worked three jobs as a Chinese restaurant busboy and waiter on the weekends, then a waiter in the student cafeteria, and busboy, and then thirdly, as a lab assistant in the computer lab. That experience um, he was successful with, but uh, sort of scratched his head and said, well, they, they were really good in K through 12 and, and public library, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm really interested in li where library technology is moving. So he decided he needed a second master's. He attended U University of South Carolina in Columbia. By that point, he had received a full scholarship and a graduate stipend, and so was able to live with his family on $750 a month. His wife, continuing in the tradition, uh, and she's quite talented, uh, his wife worked as a, as a waitress while he was going through school, and they raised her young son. When he finished that process, he decided to uh, drive down, I believe, to Miami and attend the ALA conference and was promptly identified by one of our illustrious directors and was hired to go to New York City in 1994. There he began to work under two uh, wonderful leaders, the first of those being Gary Strong at Queensboro Public Library. From Queensboro, he went to Metro, the Metropolitan New York Council, as the Director of Information Technology for six years and picked up a third graduate degree, an MBA from Hofstra. A second illustrious director identified his talent and stole him away from Gary, Winston Tabb, brought him to Johns Hopkins. Shimo was very excited to move into an academic library as a head of systems uh, after being twice recruited by, by Winston. In January 2009, I was able to lure him away to come to Emory as the associate vice provost for university libraries. The chair of that search committee uh, was a gentleman by the name of Santa Ono. Santa and I talked about the recruits. Santa was very impressed with Shimo. We brought him to the university, and I was delighted to have a chance to work with him. Santa is now the, uh, was the provost at the University of Cincinnati and recruited and hired Shimo, and he's now become the president of the University of Cincinnati. Shimo is the first of the current RLF fellow in this, in this cohort to advance uh, to become an ARL director. He's a man who embodies integrity. He embraces hard work. He loves to travel. He's a terrific competitor when it comes to sports. Swimming, basketball, but don't play him a game of ping pong. He's, he really embodies this bridge between the East and the West. Again, he's a terrific colleague, and he's a colleague, and he's someone who's going to make some real waves here. I give you Shima Wang. Uh, 
Uh, Colleen has been delayed, so we're going to save the introduction she was to do today for tomorrow. It will be a very special introduction at the business meeting in the morning. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to several new interim directors who are attending this meeting for the first time. Would you please stand? Pat Hawthorne of Emory University, Vivian Lewis from McMaster, and Andrea Stewart from George Washington. We're very glad to have you with us. I would also like to welcome to this meeting the individuals whom we expect will be the future leaders of ARL Libraries, the ARL Research Library Leadership Fellows. Will all the fellows who are in the room please stand so that we may recognize you? This membership meeting is the capstone event of the class of 2011 and 12, so we're happy that you're able to join us and allow us to celebrate with you later in the program tomorrow, I believe. This is a very impressive group of professionals, and if you've not done so already, I encourage you to get to know them better. Their names are listed in the attendance roster, and you can also spot them across the room, assuming you can see, and by a ribbon on their name tags which says, Fellow. I'd now like to acknowledge the guests who are joining us for this membership meeting. We have a number of them, and I will begin uh, alphabetically by introducing the representative who's here from ALA, Maureen Sullivan, who, of course, many of us know. <laughs> Representing ACRL, Executive Director Mary Ellen Davis. Uh, representing the Canadian Association of Research Libraries, Tom Hickerson, our colleague from Calgary. as well as Brent Rowe, who is the executive director of CARL. <laughs> Representing Bio One, Susie Scomel. <laughs> Representing IMLS, Susan Hildreth. <laughs> Representing Ithaca, Deanna Markham. Representing the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, Don Waters. <laughs> Representing the National Humanities Alliance, Steve Kidd. <laughs> Representing OCLC, Jay Jordan. <laughs> Representing RLG programs at OCLC Research, Jim Mahako. Representing the Digital Preservation Network, Stephen Morales. We have two members of the press representing the Chronicle of Higher Education, Jennifer Howard. And representing the examiner, Reginald Johnson. And finally, I want to acknowledge the presence here today of Elliot Shore, our executive director designate, whom I will introduce more formally at a greater length this evening. But still, Elliot, will you please stand to be recognized? We know, of course, that ARL is an organization comprising institutions primarily, but it really is the people, the member representatives and the staff who make the organization what it is. I think as this introduction of new members shows us what we just heard a few moments ago, we've done a very good job, I think, in the past of recognizing and welcoming new people coming into our midst, as well as paying tribute to those who are retiring. But we have generally not stopped to acknowledge those who have come before us and whose passing, and particularly so many in recent months, remind us that we do stand on the shoulders of giants, so to speak, that we have a great debt of gratitude to a number of people who made this association and our libraries what they are. So I do want to acknowledge these six people, starting with Donald Hunt, University of Tennessee, served as the director there from 1976 to 1988 and prior to that was at Oregon State University from 1955 to 1972. Jay Lucker of MIT. Jay served as director at MIT from 1975 to 1995. He was president of ARL in 1981 and chaired a number of our committees. 
He led the library's transition to digital library resources and services and trained a number of future leaders of ARL. Joseph Rosenthal, UC Berkeley. Joe was the university librarian from 1979 to 1991. He served on the ARL Board of Directors from 1984 to 1987 and on numerous ARL committees. Following his retirement, he served on the San Francisco Library Commission. Russell Shank, UCLA and the Smithsonian Institute. Russell was the first Vice Chancellor for Library and Information Services Planning at UCLA from 1977 to 1988. He had served at the Smithsonian Institution Libraries from 1967 to 1977, and it was under his leadership that the Smithsonian Libraries became a member of ARL. Basil Stewart Stubbs, University of British Columbia. Mr. Stewart Stubbs was appointed university librarian in 1964 and served in this capacity until 1981. He was then professor and director of the School of Library, Archival, and Information Studies until he retired in 1992. He served on the ARL Board of Directors from 1970 to 1973 and was on a number of ARL committees. Paul Vassallo, University of New Mexico. Paul served as the director of New Mexico Libraries from 1974 to 1986, during which time those libraries joined ARL. He had also served as director of the National Serials Data Program at the Library of Congress before going to New Mexico, and then later was the first president and CEO of the Washington Research Library Consortium. And last, William Welch, Library of Congress. Bill was the Deputy Librarian of Congress in 1976 to 1988, but he had joined the Library of Congress in 1947 and was inter instrumental in so many key activities of the last part of the 20th century there, such as the renovation of the Jefferson Building, the development of a decertification process for books, starting LC's first digital collections activity with the Optical Disc Program, Will you please stand for a moment of silence as we recall the debt we owe to these predecessors? Thank you. I now transition to a series of announcements, which seems very strange, actually, after that. Uh, first, uh, the attendance book, the famous attendance books, which we no longer pass among the tables, is at the registration desk, and we do like people to sign it. So sometime uh, during the meeting, will you please stop and do that? Uh, also, there's an evaluation form in your meeting packet, which we would like you very much to fill out, either now or to do online later after you return. We really do pay attention very strongly to the feedback that we get, both for the logistics for the meetings as well as for program ideas. And finally, for member representatives only, a reminder that the business meeting will be held tomorrow in this very place from 8.30 uh, to 10.15. On September 10th, member representatives received from the executive director information about the three votes that are to take place tomorrow. Uh, the agenda for the meeting and supporting materials available at the registration desk, so if you haven't already, please do pick that up. Also, as you know, we typically recognize colleagues who are concluding their role as ARL member library directors uh, at our business meeting. Uh, as of now, we have four such people whom we'll be recognizing tomorrow. And in the past, we have done this in the business meeting. But in response to a number of suggestions that we got in Chicago when there were such wonderful tributes that were given, we have decided that we will do this tomorrow at 10.35 after the business meeting so that not only the member representatives but the guests may be present to hear these tributes to the four people who will be departing ARL directorships shortly. And we're also going to acknowledge in a more uh, detailed way the RLF fellows tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Music was provided by Josh Woodward. For more talks from this meeting, please visit www.arl.org.